Yeah, good afternoon. Good evening, good morning, wherever you find yourself. Um, excited to start the next section of the series. Today is the four of AI Africa series 2.0. And um, this is the second to last section of the entire series of the week. And I'm excited to have all of you in the call. My name again remains Emmanuel Bever. And I'm the CTO for IDEC Digital. Um, IDEC Digital is a software development company. And we specialize in software, we specialize in web application development. Uh, we're also into BPO services, we are into training. Um, we're currently doing ISO training certification. Um, so if you're interested in any of those services, please call IDEC Digital. We'll be able to sort you out. Um, so uh, again, today we want to look at how AI is changing the landscape of marketing and consulting. And I want to thank the previous speakers for today, Dr. Pius Gadjose, uh, Juliet Skojudi, and then uh, Daniel uh, Bonzi. So thank you guys. Um, Pius, Dr. Pius is going to take us in the evening um, on how AI is changing lecturing or teaching uh, profession. So let's let's get to it. So today we'll be looking at uh, we'll do a brief introduction to AI and its application in uh, in marketing and consulting. We we'll, would we'll try and see how we can understand uh, the way AI is actually um, uh, you know shaping the behavior uh, of consumers through the analysis. And then um, we'll look at how we we'll implement AI tools for market uh, research and trend analysis. We'll move on to leverage on AI for personalized marketing strategies. And also look at the AI powered automations for consulting services. And finalize, finally, sorry, we'll look at um, how we should consider ethical way of adopting AI uh, for marketing and consulting purposes. So uh, please, again, uh, we want it to be interactive. So if you don't want to forget something, you can uh, on your mic and then speak our pause and then you can ask your question or probably put in uh, a contribution. And so we'll be able to have a, a better understanding of what might probably be bothering your mind um, as far as the topic is concerned. Uh, please be also watching out in the chat sections. We'll be sharing um, some links and um, sheets of which you can put your name. If you need a certificate of any of the sections, uh, we would provide that. Thank you so much. Now, so. How can we enhance customer engagement? I, I spoke briefly uh, about something like this in some of my previous lectures, uh, where we come across um, area where we are getting to now that everybody wants something to be personalized to their taste, okay, to their, to their, to their interests or to their preference. And so that is what AI has come to do. So as marketers, it is it is crucial that whenever you are bringing out products or you are trying to sell product to a customer, you should be thinking about how you tailor that product to the customer's preference. All right. So how can that be done? How do we uh, strategize that? So AI can enable 
the creation of personalized marketing strategies based on customers' behavior and preferences, leading to higher engagement and conversion rates. Um, in my previous, let, let, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, teachings as well, uh, we came across the fact that we need to, there are certain stages that customers go through to buy or to be able to even get to know your product and, and begin to have an engagement and, 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 and therefore you converting those customers to a real sales. Okay, so whilst that is in place, uh, we want to see how best we can uh, enable or put in an AI um, uh, systems that can tell her, that can tell her the the kind of things that customers or your customers are looking for. Okay, uh, based on either their lifestyle, so we talk about their behavior, okay, and preferences. So how does what exactly uh, your customers are looking for? So again, I cite an example of those of you who are posting things on social media. Critically take a look at those who are liking your uh, product or your service. Don't take those likes lightly, okay? You should always um, uh, be excited that somebody likes your product or somebody likes your whatever, even if it's a post, a normal post, you put it there and somebody are liking them. Uh, that should be something you should be asking yourself. Okay, so first you can post something and people like it, you can count the number of likes, and then the other day you post, uh, the like has come down, and then another, another day you post, and then the, 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 the probably no like at all. So that alone should give you an impression that there's something going on. There are certain things people like when you post them. There are certain things that people don't like when you post them. That alone to you can give you even an insight as a human being. Now, let alone the machine is going to be very much of analytics. So that's why if you see most of these social media platforms, they have a, a, a dashboard to it or analytics parts to it where you can see all these people who are engaging with your service uh, or with your post that you're, you're, you're sending across. So AI tool that you can deploy that can integrate all your platforms in one you know, dashboard and give you all the insights of what is happening in there. The other part is that these AI um, can help you work 24 hours, okay? Or can help you engage your customers 24 hours. And typical of it is the chatbot. Um, chatbot has become one of the tools that most companies or serious companies are deploying now on their platforms okay so that would help you uh, engage your customers before you get in there now what we used to train most of the chatbots uh, has to do with what we call knowledge base knowledge base um, um, what do you call it data the knowledge base data basically could be that you have a frequently asked questions and you could have a whole a repository of frequently asked questions and also how certain things could be done. You could build that up in your system and use that to train your chatbot. And so whatever, whenever somebody or a, a customer gets into your platform or your website, um, they tend, these chatbots tend to begin to communicate with the customer before even the human uh, interventions comes in. There's another thing that we use to train these chatbots um, called a document intelligence, okay? The, this document intelligence could be um, the fact that it could be uh, what you are actually typing in, okay? It could be that you are typing in something, uh, we, are, we are using what you are typing in to learn and also respond to the answer. Or you could even upload a document, okay? Once you upload a document, that document could be used to analyze and answer, you know, and provide an answer to whatever you are looking for. So people could have several documents, um, several pages of documents and want an insight out of it. 
and you could upload that and and begin to you know query the chatbot and the chatbots give you all that you needed from there so these are some of the things that are happening in the marketing space that we need to look out for uh, as marketers and also um uh, people who want to sell products um, even if you are not a marketer you want to sell a product out there uh product um, a predictive customer analytics again has to do with the dashboard i spoke about yes ai analyzed large data uh, set to predict customers behavior allowing marketers to tailor their strategies and offerings for better results okay um again it's not everything that you post is what um all the audiences that are viewing it will like so we want to be specific okay okay kofi likes this i want to tell her that ama like the other one we want to send those to ama so that is how marketing has become it's no longer like you go and gather everybody and start marketing your products to them all right so uh, uh i said in my previous uh, uh presentation also that uh now what these social media stuff are doing is that anytime you get a like we determine what exactly you are liking on on the platform and that is what we use to define your lifestyle okay so anytime you like something what you are actually doing is that you are defining your lifestyle for the social media platforms or for whatever page you are liking those things you are defining your your lifestyle now if you are even creating an account to and uh, to have access to specific platforms you are actually defining defining your lifestyle again because sometimes they may ask you some few questions to answer and those questions would be used to determine your interest or your preference so we can target whatever products or services you are looking for uh, to you uh, automated ad targeting yes so ai automates uh, the process of ad targeting okay ensuring that the right audiences uh, or the, the right audience is reached with the most relevant messaging uh, for improved campaign performance i think i've explained this right um content optimization ai also analyze content performance and suggest you know optimizations helping marketers create more compelling and effective marketing materials i mean i said it yeah these days i it's no longer all these bloggers you see if you join the blogging sections that we did and then the influencer sections that we did we are saying that all these bloggers you see on the social media platform posting stuff sometimes is not they are not posting things that they think that they can create by themselves all right they have they are behind an ai you know dashboard which is actually telling them that the public a majority of the public are probably interested in specific you know uh keywords or specific uh, interested in specific um uh, uh what do you call it, products or services that they would want to you know um uh, engage in so these bloggers go in there and create those those stuff for, for 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 them so when you are you are watching something and you are laughing or you are interested in it it's not because it's not by accident okay it's not by accident that you are watching those things it's by a careful uh, content optimization that leads to whatever the content developer or creator is creating for you or you, uh, or targeting you with that basically real-time market insights okay so this time we want to make sure that everything that is happening is real uh is live okay um so what's uh, there, there's one chatbot uh, that i love so much to use uh, anytime somebody walked into my website i see that oh it prompt me that there's somebody on my website there's a sound okay, it makes the sound and anytime you move from one page to another i know that okay you are on my about us page you are on my service page you are actually uh probably you are still there oh you left okay so we want to see how long you have waited on our pages 
or how you've been going around up and down on our pages. So when that is done, we trigger, you know, chatbot to talk to you. You know, it's an automated thing. I might not even be there, but the the chatbot would automatically know that, okay, you are looking for something or probably you are confused or you're not confused. If you're not moving your mouse, again, we know that you're not moving your mouse on, on our screen. Um, if you are moving it, which particular test probably your mouse you know stays or is hovering around we know we calculate we can check everything to know that this is what you are doing on the screen okay so so once you are going around there uh, basically we can define your your lifestyle we can define what you may want or what you are looking for so if you are seeing an ad uh, around your uh, either social media or platform that you go to it's not by accident that you've seen them it's because you have visited some website uh, probably looking for something or typing some words that we we are capturing to know that you are looking for specific things so that's how marketing uh, is, is is getting to now streamlining consulting processes okay data driven decision is key right no longer um, um, you know cracking your mind to see how best you can get these things done. If you want to go into specific market area, you first, you can research the area. You should first of all know whether this area or these are the product people are looking for. Um, I used to uh, go to one of the platform called uh, Google Trends. I think that's a Google Trends or so. And if you look, if you go to Google and type Google Trends, you, you should go, you check it out, right? Uh, what basically is happening is that it's actually all over the world, even Ghana, you can, you can you can even narrow it down or target it all the way to Accra. What specific business is, would be good in Accra or people are looking for? What product are people looking for in Accra as of this month or as of this year? It can give you all that, okay? And you can be able to now go in and say, okay, let me go into this kind of marketing. I mean, so you can see that people are doing business not because they they feel like doing it but because people are interested in that particular service and if you don't know you don't know okay if you don't know that things like this exist that you if you want to go into business you want to go into specific area you can use specific tools or ai tools to be able to um get some of these things done you will know so decisions are made based on um uh, 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 what do you call it based on uh, data and and also, we can be able to automate and, and generate reports. Okay, it's key. We need to do that. Uh, risks uh, assessment and then um, predictions. Yes, like I said. Okay, <laughs> like I said, we want to you know check to know whether there's any risks involved in this particular product or not. So you can you can get all that using AI tools. Um, any questions so far before I move on to uh, how to understand or how we should understand the AI-driven consumer behavior analysis? Any question from here now? Yeah, I yeah. have a question. Hi. Great. Uh, once again, wow. my name is Ebenezer. Ebenezer, welcome here. Thank you. Uh, you're talking about the chat box and then the automation. I yes. have an I have an encounter with a, a currently Terry sir. Whenever okay. there is a problem, and then you try to reach them on a chat box, they don't even reply. <laughs> and when you go there, you tell them that oh, I had a problem, and I have reported it to the chat box. They, they look at your face like they don't know what you are talking about. <laughs> It has been, I mean, continuously. So sometimes I need to tell them, look, I'm a technician and therefore this is that, this is that, before they will refer you to a commercial manager. And this is a big company. What do we do when it comes to these things? Yes. So uh, I think I've also experienced some things similar uh, like that you, you, you try to point out. Um, I think they were saying that, oh, we no longer uh, have a presence of people in our office. So anytime you want something, please 
uh, especially even if you are calling their uh, short code numbers, they will tell you that, okay, um, our customers are engaged, but you can drop the call and probably speak to a chatbot and blah, 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 and it will sort you out and all that. Um, the stress you go through to get that, I, I, know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so it, it, it all depends on the company, okay? Um, and sometimes, you see the way you feel right now, you are not comfortable, you're not satisfied with the service that they are rendering. And so if they get things like this, that can improve their service, okay? It can improve their service. And I believe that you are not the only person complaining. Maybe probably others are also complaining of a similar, you know, experience. And so they need to put all these together. Um, I don't know how they collect their feedbacks uh, to, 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 to be used for, for an improvement of their, their systems. I don't know how they do that. But, uh, I mean, I wish that we have some of those uh, people who work in that space uh, in the call so they can be able to address this issue. But uh, I can only tell you that uh, probably they are not taking care of their system properly uh, or the system is not functioning um, uh, in, in its full capacity. Okay, so they need to uh, train the, the chatbot properly to be able to answer any question that may comes out. Like I said, we have two different ways you can train the, this chatbot by what we call document intelligence or using what we call um, a knowledge base, okay? So I believe that uh, Telesell, as we speak, they could have volumes of knowledge base per the way they interact with customers. So they could build that up now. It can be a huge website on it or, or, or portal on its own, which they can, you know, leverage on using um, these chatbots to be able to uh, answer all these, these, these uh, questions. So, um, that's what I can say for now. Um, if there's no other question, can we move on? Yes, um, or is somebody's there any hand is up. Somebody's hand is up. Okay, please. I'm not, I can't see that. So please, uh, Gloria uh, or Angel, if somebody's hands up, please, you can call the person up or you can come in. Please, um, unmute yourself and speak, please. Hello. Hello. Yeah, thanks for the for beautiful presentation. I, based on your presentation, I did you something that I want to find out. That is a, a very a behavioral marketing. Like um, these days, when you are browsing on social media page, you realize that when you are searching on a particular thing, you realize that anytime you go to the page, the same kind of things will be showing to you in that order companies that are selling the same products i mean they'll be showing all those things to you so i want to know right now that i realize that i mean uh, with the help of what ai they were able to gather all those data and then able to tailor those things though it will help consumer decision making journey but i want to know if we are safe yes so yes we are safe we are really safe um the answer is we are safe um uh, the issue is we can get anything that you have around you as i said even the movement of your mouse can be determined i can we can track to know whether you are watching a video or you're not watching okay that is that's why even sometimes when you are watching, I don't know who ever experienced this, that you are watching a, you are watching an ad probably on um, on on Facebook or YouTube. Whereas you flip to the next tab, the video pause. It's no longer play. Okay, we, we, it's no longer going to play. Unless you switch back to that tab again, then you see that the video start playing automatically again. Right. Yeah. So those are some of the things. Yeah, they're there. So if we know that you are no longer watching that tab, you've not opened it. It's not. It's not. It's not something you are not watching. You are not there. So we know that anytime you move from one screen to another or one window to the other, we know. So we we are we are determining your we are we are capturing your behavior, uh, and all that. Now with the issue of you seeing one ad 
or one product and once you move on to another page or another platform and you are seeing, seeing similar things, it's the same procedure that we use to track those, um, uh, what do you call it, um, behavior, okay? It's a, it's a marketing, you know, strategy or marketing tool that is being used to target customers to buy um, a specific product for, for a, a whoever is producing it, okay? And the issue about whether we are safe or not, Yes, we are safe. Uh, no, we may not be safe as well, uh, if I can add that part of it. Um, that if you are not safe in the sense that probably if you are giving some, you know, vital information of of you out, uh, we, we, when we get in that, definitely uh, that can be a problem, especially also if the person who is using that tool is not ethical enough. That is why even throughout our presentations, We've been, I mean, there's no presentation that you would hear from Tuesday till today. You will not get ethical consideration, ethical way of doing things in any of our presentations. Okay, so we'll get to that. You must be mor morally right or ethically right to be able to be in this space, not use it for the purposes that can endanger people's lives or can endanger um, um, their way of, of, of doing things. So it is, it is there. I mean, uh, that is why we also have laws that backs or that uh, supports consumers in uh, such a way that if you think that your right has been infringed or upon, you can either sue or uh, probably, um, you know, uh, report the person to the authorities uh, there's a cyber security authority, there's a data protection authority. Uh, if you've, you've, you've seen something that you don't like, you can report to them. If you go to their website, they have they have a, a reporting, you know, uh, forms that you can fill. They will get back to you immediately and then trigger uh, an investigation into whatever the problem is, especially cyber security. They are very much um, on, 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 on sports when it comes to things like that. So, yes, um, we are safe, and in another breath, too, we are not safe. That's how I can say it. Is there any more questions before we move on? Mr. Kwabna Chumisi's hand is up. Yeah, Chumisi, please. No questions. Uh, I'm sure it's Kwabna Jukum, you mean. Oh, okay. <laughs> so my question yes. is, mm -hmm. and I'm more interested in this data, uh, real-time data-driven intelligence information, what have you. I would want to find out. Yes. The way this AI can profile and give you information, is it mm. possible that we can get data here yeah, i'm speaking to the marketing environment variable mm. and mm. some school of thought will give you a three tier so you have the micro meso and macro i know also the macro information on the economic side of it is all on the internet you can get it with or without ai you can get on political yeah. environment you can get on uh, social cultural, you can get on technology and all of that. Is, is it mm. the case that, for example, I want to know competition and I take two companies, say Guinness Ghana mm. Brewers Limited, what they are doing presently in terms of their campaign, chill, tilt, and pour, 45 degrees. Mm. Mm. That campaign, if I want to know how it will impact on the other brewing companies, say, Casapreco PLC, say Accra Brewing Limited, and I have mm. this AI tool. I, I, am I able to uh, punch the current campaign that Guinness is running to be able to find the what if scenarios that it will give me if I'm a, uh, a manager in, say, Accra Brewery or in, say, Casapreco PLC, especially on the mm. mezzo side of things, suppliers, environment, competition distributors, you know, how they are going about their distribution and all of that. Is it possible? If it's possible, I'll be very happy because it makes our work, our work more, more easier and simple. 
Thank you. Yes, it is. It is. It is possible, and it is easy to 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 arrive at all those parameters that you uh, spell out. Um, so, AI. As, as you mean, I gave you the Guinness campaign now. Can that, uh, Can we mm. do a demo out of it? Or you don't have the yeah, tool. So, yeah, so, I so have to I'm see you privately for consult and, uh, <laughs> consultation. Yeah, so I'm coming there. I'm coming there. So the the issue about AI is driven by data. Okay, the issue about AI is about data. Now, um, first of all, you need to ask yourself whether you can get the data of uh, the first company you've mentioned. Um, can you get their data? If you cannot get their data, it becomes so um, difficult. Now, if they are running campaign, are they running it through an online or is on TVs or stuff like that? Okay, if it's outside of the the online space, they become a bit difficult. But if we can collect that data and give us that data, we can have that data right now. We can produce the outcome in seconds, all right? We can give you all that analytics, you know, in terms of all the parameters, whether the effects of that campaign of one product would be having on the other company's product, that can be done within seconds, all right? It's a matter of the data. So if it's online, also, we also have other platforms that are running uh, and ads for companies like you can call you can talk about a Google ad or Google Word stuff like that and there's also um, uh, there's also a Facebook ad you can do the LinkedIn ad you can do so depending on the platforms that uh, these ads are coming from okay and these uh, these platforms that I'm mentioning they are all protective of the data they have okay so it becomes a bit difficult if you want to, uh, uh, what do you call it, integrate all the data from these platforms, and it's a bit expensive. The last time I wanted to do uh, uh, analysis on hotspots, okay, uh, let me give you this scenario. So I'm, I was trying to develop an AI tool that can predict what could happen in this election in specific Pulling station. In terms of maybe there is a there's going to be a fight. There's going to be a ballot snatching. There's going to be gun battle and stuff like that. I want to predict uh, uh, something like that so that the, before it happens, a police can move in there. You know, they can deploy police people there before that can happen. And so, what did I do? I was trying to get a data from Twitter, from Facebook. And then from um, um, from um, Instagram, okay. So we would analyze sentiment of people because we noticed that before something happens, people could even put it on social media first before before anyone else could know. Even with the news portals, they could even it could even get to Facebook faster. So the idea is to integrate uh, an API from these platforms into one application. And that application should be able to analyze the sentiments of specific regions. So we can pick and know which region this thing is coming from, even by the, the IP address of, you know, the person who is using the phone or the computer. We can determine that to know which particular location is the person doing or uh, sending that message from. So that is why it is not safe that even once you want to, you know, post something dangerous about somebody and you think that, oh, okay, you have a, a bad account or maybe some other account that you can use that to, you know, do that. If you are doing that, you can easily be figured out, okay? So we can use those APIs to integrate that into the platform and track you and know where those things are happening. So once that is done, or if that, I mean, when I, when I look at the data, how much I'm supposed to be paying for the, that API, I just have to abandon that that uh, uh, project using, you know, the social media. So what did I use? 
I have to now say, okay, I want to use new spot outs. So I'm now trying to scrap through the new spot outs and grab news headlines. The time the news headlines comes in and what is that news saying? So I will read through all the news using the AI and then the news, the AI will tell me that, okay, the news is saying that there is a, a, a riot, there's a gun battle at this specific, you know, police station or this region. And it will pick that and tells me and tell me that. And so this application is supposed to be um, deployed by the police people. And then the police people are actually monitoring the dashboard and knowing what is happening. And then they can send their men to the place quickly. So you can see the level of, you know, data thinking and the data integration and how expensive that data could be. So if you can get an API from Google Ad, okay, that you can use to integrate into your platform that you are going to use or the platform we can use, the AI platform. That, yes, fair enough. We, we could get that in a second. So you can see the level uh, at which you can get those data to analyze these things that we are talking about. So it's there. I mean, the platforms are there. There are platforms that are integrating a lot of, you know, these social media, um, which you can get these data from. But it will cost you a bit to do that. So if I have to do that for you, yes, uh, it will cost you some, some, some small dollars. <laughs> that is that 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 will definitely come from with with a cost. Yes. So we 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 are we are we are poised or we are ready as company to help anybody who uh, need our service in those regards. We'll be able to get you uh, anything. And if you have the money, money can do everything. So we we will be able to sort you out. All right. Um, do we have any hands up again? If not, then we can proceed. Any more concerns, questions? Right. Yeah, I have one question I would like to ask. Okay. I'd like to know if AI is taking uh, the place of search engine marketing. Yes. Uh, I said in one of my presentations that, yes, that is what is going to happen. It's going to happen, and it's going to be happening so fast, okay? Uh, what I was saying is that Google, right now, Google, and I mean, I knew Google was G3, and that is where quickly they also came up with, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, an AI platform or an AI API, stuff like that, like just like um, open AI. Okay, so open AI is like a it's like a, an organization, right? That came out with um, this AI tool called ChatGPT. Okay, so open AI is more or less like a repository of data being trained and now being used, you know, as a natural language that you can process, you can, you know, use to deduce whatever you you want to do with. So all you do on ChatGPT. Um, the ChatGPT is more like a like a chatbot. Okay, it's a chatbot which is being created by OpenAI. Now, if you take Google, Google has come out with what they call Gemini. Okay, the Gemini is 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 just a replica of OpenAI. Okay, so they also have a data that they train. Okay, and then they also created their own version of uh, ChatGPT called. Uh, uh, bad also I think that's the name of it because I don't use it very much so I think the name is bad also B A R D or so they, they call it right so that is what is happening so because because Google knows that this you know um, these uh, chat GPTs and the rest can take their market so they quickly have to create something quickly to 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 as a, as a supplement of their product. That is how come they, they, they came out with that. But I know that because it's been a while that I have to check Google to look for an information. Because the ChatGPT or Copilot is ready to give me the same thing if I go to, um, what do you call it, if I go to Google. And mind you that all these open AIs, you know, or uh, Gemini, they are all, they pick information from Google as well, 
okay, or they pick information from other sources, uh, which make the information you are getting more richer than the others. So, yes, uh, very soon, uh, watch out for that. It's going to be serious. It's going to take the, the, the entire marketing because they will be better to do a better marketing than any other uh, platforms. I hope I've answered your question. Can we move on now? All right. So uh, enhancing uh, consumer insights with AI technology. Yes, utilizing machine learning algorithms uh, for predictive analysis. You yes, spoke about this already. I'm just going to rush through these ones. Uh, personalizing customer experience through data-driven approach. Yes, yes. Data, data, data. Everything you hear about will be data, okay? If I want to personalize your experience, it must be bordered on data. Now, if I want to segment the market and target my to specific, you know, uh, customers, it should all be bordered on data, all right? Um, and that data can be collected through the behavior um, and and through the lifestyle that we have we have couched or we have created for you and, and, and all that. Now, if you go to Facebook right now, you can even go and see your data. You know, Facebook is collecting the data of you and keeping it. It's there. If you don't know, it's there. And I think uh, they delete it for a specific period. They will delete it and then probably you create another one. But that deletion is not actually true because the data is, 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 a go, is gold now. Okay, is the mind. So right now, they, they, they don't just throw away data. Okay, and they will use it for the purpose that they want to use it for. But they, if they're not using it well, according to the law, the law will catch up with them. I, I, I think recently, uh, I think, was it WhatsApp? WhatsApp also is being penalized by Nigerian government. And they are saying that they are not going to pay. They want to pull out of the market. So it means that they want to shut down uh, WhatsApp in Nigeria or so. Because they've been found to be uh, flouting their laws. And so they have to, you know, sanction them. And they want to <laughs> run out. I feel that when they are out of the market, Nigeria should just take the advantage and also create something for their, their people. And that can also become a bigger, you know, uh, product that they want to leverage on. Because <laughs> these guys are the ones that are having the money if, because they have the data. And they can, they can create any AI to leverage on that data for their own good. Right. Optimizing business strategy within AI-powered consumer insights. Okay. So we need to utilize uh, the AI to analyze the sentiment. I said about this again. When we collect your feedbacks that you are given, uh, your Facebook, your likes, your loves, and all that. Um, and so if you look at even the Facebook emojis, okay, look at them. They are rated according to sentiments, okay? Your like, your love, your sadness, your... I mean, they are all there. Even if you go to face, uh, WhatsApp, it's also there. So anytime you even send emojis, it's a whole data you are sending across you're sending huge data across and you are defining defining your your lifestyle and your your preferences okay in 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 the way you do things and we will target adverts at you based on how we have you know uh, taken your uh, behavior and the way we personalize your data for you so we we we, we, we do sentiment analysis out of that and determine what you, you will love. Leverage AI for trends analysis and forecasting. Yes. So again, I said earlier in, in my previous uh, uh, presentation that even now that bloggers don't just block. They don't just send you stuff. Okay. They are monitoring the trends. Go to Google Trends. I say that. Go to Google Trends. Begin to explore that application. It's not... In, in entirely our presentation was not to market any product but i encourage you go there if you want to go into business type anything any keyword into the search area and begin to see some of the things that people are talking about what are the businesses people are patronizing as of this 
uh, morning or today. You will get all that from Google Trends. Okay. Um, then uh, enhancing decision making, um, AI driven consumer behavior analysis. Okay. Uh, talked about that. Maximizing marketing uh, impacts with AI enable consumer behavior understanding. Okay. Be consumer behavior, you know, uh, we spoke about, I mean, we have a uh, marketing in the call. I'm excited to have that. So, uh, you know, consumer behavior, how, how do you get these things uh, using AI in a real time? Um, uh, also, personalizing these things that they may, they, they, they may want you to, 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 to get for them. Um, and also, and engaging them, okay, and making sure that they are loyal to your product, okay. You can use these AI tools to make sure that uh, you get all that for them, okay. Any question? We're moving on to implementing AI tools for marketing research and trends. So, any question? I'm moving on. Right. So enhancing marketing research um, with AI technology. Um, so we are saying that um, there are so much of uh, advanced algorithms, okay, uh, that that can that can drive data, okay, that can drive data to be able to give you an insight, okay. And here we are looking at AI tools that can enable. Uh, the use of complex um, algorithms, okay, to analyze vast amount of data. Like I said, whereas I was looking for data from all these platforms, that is huge data to, to analyze. And that can give you better, better insights and better trends of what consumers are, are, are looking for. Okay, so I wish, I wish um, we could have things like this right where you can track your consumers easily right and know what exactly they are looking for and then you yes they are they are, they are just sitting in their in the comfort of their rooms and then you come and knock their door uh, miss uh, please i noticed that you are looking for this then you'll be asking you how do you know i'm looking for this and say okay we are in a space that's where we are getting to that's what that's how it's going to be like right that you are sitting in the comfort of your room and somebody knock your door then he says, please, uh, I noticed that you are looking for uh, an ice cream. So please, this, you, this is the ice cream. Then you wonder, ah, how? It's already happening on social media platforms. It's already happening when you visit platforms. And you are seeing it with your eyes. So now, it will now manifest in the physical form where people will now be walking to your doorsteps and bringing things that they feel you wanted. You, This is the thing you want. And we be are bringing it. <laughs> so somebody will say, like, "Hey, then now, like, like, like the the other question, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, the other uh, person in the call ask, are we safe? Are we safe? Because if the person can walk to your house and say, I noticed that you are looking for this, are we safe? That's the question. It's a conversation that we'll come to. Right. Predict the trends. Um, also empowering uh, trends analysis through AI insight. Okay, we need an insight. So the insight definitely again data. We need to uh, make sure that these AI uh, tools leverage on data to be able to uh, get us what we are looking for. So identify patterns and anomalies in the data. Okay, so we will know whether. So even for instance, if you are liking products or you are disliking products, let's say for instance. You like specific products. Say somebody posted, uh, say, um, a, a specific yogurt, and then you like it. Then they posted, or uh, somebody post another yogurt again. It could be the same company, but probably different brand. Then you give it um, dislike, right? Uh, thumbs down or some kind of things. So the system have a way to analyze. Why is it that? You like this product, but this product, which is also coming from the same company, you don't like it. Okay, so now the system will now begin to think that ah, probably you tasted this one and you tasted the other one too, and then now we now want to look at the two products 
what are the content of these two products? Okay, okay, then we will now, you know, uh, align the content. Then we notice that there is one content, okay, or ingredient in, in the other or product B or yogurt B that probably is not in yogurt A is what probably might cause you not to like it. You see? So then we can, you know, leverage to know that, okay, this is what is happening. We can go back and 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 actually better that ingredient so that we would be better off, you know, selling that other product to us well or probably ban that product completely out of the market. So these are the insights that marketers uh, need to be um, looking at. It's no longer going to take pen and paper, go to, uh, what do you call it, the consumers and be asking them questions. Uh, what do we do? I mean, what do you think about this product and that kind of thing? No. Systems are here to do all those analysis for us without going uh, to the consumers again to ask them anything. Because they would provide you those feedback to be able to leverage on. Right. Right, so I think I spoke about this already extensively, uh, consumer behavior analysis, um, uh, segmentation of, of, of ads or, or products to consumers, uh, sentiments, you know, analysis and trends and predictions so that you would know what exactly uh, your customers are looking for. So you see that you have AI-driven sentiment analysis provides insights into consumer attitudes emotions and future trends predictions guiding strategic marketing initiatives right so <laughs> it is it is it is here you don't you don't you don't have to go and ask in your consumers anything all right they are holding phones now even market women they are now holding sophisticated phones they see emojis they they like them that i mean these emojis are created for people like that because they know that people may not uh, love to write if you write, if you are typing, that one even help us more because we can even deduce better insight from what you are writing. Uh, so those are some of the things that are happening in the space. Uh, personalizing marketing. Um, so again, I said this already. We want to bring this to you. We want to bring your product to you without you uh, even knowing that we know that these are the products you like. We want to predict that this is how um, you are reacting to this particular product and in the next day or two you would go back to buy that same product okay we want to know when will you go and buy pro, uh, you got a again instead of you got b all right so we know so we know that okay um uh, mr kofi would love to go and buy products a in the next two weeks you will buy that so we will know so we track all these things through modeling, okay, through the AI um, uh, modeling and prediction. So all these are happening. And as marketers, we need to uh, be ready or we need to educate ourselves so that we don't go back doing what we know has existed for years and we keep doing it, whereas others are already, you know, at the high speed level, you know. I keep, I mean, the section that has ended some um, minutes ago or some hours ago, it's about using AI for developing softwares, okay? And there was a lot of conversation there, right? People feel that, oh, as for me, why should, I mean, I've been a senior uh, developer. A senior Being senior developer means that you have to be working for over years to acquire that experience. Please, the technology we have now, as, I, uh, as, 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 as we speak, which is the AI, has come to shorten how people learn, has come to, you know, speed up how things have been done. You know, in the previous revolutions, like third industrial revolutions and fourth industrial revolution, four, we are now moving to the fifth industrial revolution, fourth and fifth, okay, where you're talking about blockchain, internet of things, AI, machine learning, deep learning, okay? Now, we no longer, uh, at the previous revolutions, things are done with uh, accuracy, okay? Everything that is being done, we're doing it nicely. So you see Microsoft Office 
Microsoft Office can give us, you know, a better way of typing, formatting, quality of it, better PowerPoint can give you power, better uh, PowerPoint presentations and all that. But now, <laughs> the speed is that you just type in a topic and then we create a PowerPoint for you and it's ready for production for whatever. So that is the that is the level we have gone now. It, we, we, we are adding quality and speed together. Okay? Quality and speed. That is what this technology has come to do or has come to offer us. So if we find ourselves in any space, marketing, wherever you find yourself, be ready to learn the tools. Be ready to get access to these tools. Otherwise, before you know, you are out. You are out of the equation. It's no longer about how long you have stayed there to learn these things or to be doing the old things. We are in a different era. Now, the chatbot, uh, AI chatbot, uh, uh, I spoke about this, that is really uh, changing the lifestyle of the people and is also uh, even uh, trying to learn from people. Okay, it's trying to learn from the people and trying to better the way the people are behaving and the people are um, uh, um, putting themselves across these platforms and we'll be able to get these things done properly. I mean, unless you say you don't want to even go to the internet again. All right. And if you don't want to go to the internet again, I'm sorry, because there's a time coming where uh, please give us about 10 years to come. It's 10 years is even too much. What is going to happen is that watch watch the space. Uh, just uh, watch this and keep it. Within five years to come, all your computers that you are using will be obsolete. You will no longer be required to use those computers anymore because we have moved on. We have moved on. Because what is happening now, what they are doing now is that we are producing an AI chips, okay? Meaning that AI processes are being produced. And this will come with new machines. And what it means is that you don't need to be on the internet either for us to know what is happening. All right. So your machine, you can speak to your machine. You don't have to type. You don't even have to, if you don't even have to own your machine. As long as, I mean, you don't have to open and see the screen of your machine. As long as the machine is on and you close your screen, when you speak, the machine knows that you are speaking and it's responding to everything for you. It's going through pages and is sending messages, is, is sending email, receiving email, uh, responding to your emails. You don't have to even type anything. That's where we are going. So watch out for it. Your machines, your laptops will be obsolete very soon. We will now be using an AI enabled microprocessor or microprocessing, you know, uh, a device it would mean that everything will be created by the machines you just have to speak and we'll finish you <laughs> so we're getting there now the the pricing you know we're talking about dynamic pricing strategy uh, utilizing AI to implement dynamic pricing strategy uh, tailored to to individual customer segment and behavior now people complain that oh me I don't have enough money oh this is what I have. We can begin to now even re, re, you know, configure, reconfigure some of our services or our products to suit how much money you think you have, so we can sell our product. Okay, so we it's no longer like okay we have packaged it. This is how much we are selling the package. We have a, a pack of water, so uh, it goes in thirty bottles of 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 of, of that pack. So we cannot, you know, uh, reduce the price or we cannot sell it the way we want to sell it. We can reconfigure that, you know, package of pack of water you want to sell and resell according to the customer's, you know, uh, money. So all these things are going to be happening and we need to be in the lookout for it. Okay, so return on investment is always the key that uh, whatever you have invested, you want that outcome of it. So... If you are using all the tools you are using, uh, the services you are rendering, the product, all these things culminate into the, the cost that would, would build up the product. 
And so once you are selling them, you are always uh, in the lookout for how much money you're going to make out of these things. So AI can calculate all these things for you or can do all these predictions, uh, do the simulation. There's one, one, one product we call um, a digital twin. Digital twin. The name even resonates. It means that it can have a replica of of whatever thing you are doing. Even a whole a whole company, we can we can mirror the company to know how much of product you are going to produce, okay, at the cost of the production, and how much money you could make, or all, all right, even with any um, unforeseen circumstances that could happen at the uh, during the course of the production. We can even deduce that we can track all that and give you that analysis before you even start the production, right? That's what digital twin does. You can you can you can Google it. Look for what the digital twin is. Even it's been now used in the cyber security space, okay, where um, uh, banks and other companies are using it to mirror or to virtualize their 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 systems, okay, so that when there is an attack coming. They, 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 they can mirror the attack and see where the attack is coming from and then nip it at the back before it attacks their system. So that is where we are going now. And, and AI is, is deployed to do all these things so that your investment will not be in vain. You can rip off um, a rip whatever you are, you, are, you are investing in in these technologies. All right. Privacy and, and compliance is key. I spoke about this. You cannot go... And, and be doing these things anyhow. So whilst you are programming or you are doing these things, you are conscious of the fact that people's privacy is key. I mean, we spoke about, are we, are we safe? Yes. So anytime these things are being done, we are always mindful about um, the privacy of the people. You don't invade their privacies. And so there, is, there should be a regulatory compliance uh, and also monitoring those com uh, those those. Um, uh, people who are in the space. That is why AI, uh, the key thing is that we are looking for what we call ethical frameworks, okay? There, there should be an ethical framework, especially in Ghana. We don't have that yet. Um, uh, even though, uh, if you look at the space, and I mean, I spoke on uh, um, uh, Chartered Institute uh, of Marketing Ghana's platform, and I said, yes, what we need now is a strategy. It's an AI strategy. We don't need AI laws or stuff like that. Okay, we, within the strategy, we can embed some ethical frameworks that can guide the people who are innovators, uh, you know, who are coming out with these products and, 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 and systems so that when 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 you fall, you fall short of the law, you can be responsible and you can be accountable to it. Right. Right. So... Um, I think we, 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 we spoke about the trends, analysis, personalization, uh, and all that. So the AI-powered automation for consultants, uh, streamlining processes uh, with AI. Yes, we spoke about that so that it can be efficient and productive. Uh, companies are not interested in anything apart from being efficient and productive. Right. Um, automated data analysis we spoke about this your data please make sure that when you're collecting your data it is properly collected um, um uh, put measures in place to make sure that the qual the, the quality of the data is key make sure that you are not biased in in, in doing so uh, so that your outcome would would be great um experience of your customers is key uh, and chatbots can provide that as well um, time saving solutions uh, always save the time, so uh, it's key. Uh, and most often, very repetitive tasks are being uh, plugged into these uh, AI tools so that all the time uh, we are always um, up to the tasks. So, data driven insights uh, we spoke about this, uh, just going to flip through that. Advanced um, client engagement, yes. Uh, it's always the key um, component. That's why you you have a lot of people now on different channels. Okay, we have people in face on Facebook doing their business there. There's a, a WhatsApp business. 
they link that to their website. Um, there are other platforms that they link to their website. What, what, why, why all those things? Is because we want to track our clients, our consumers, our potential um, uh, clients, so that whilst they are flipping through all those platforms, we can easily track them and 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 de and define their behavior and also be able to uh, give them whatever support they need um, uh, when they when they they need them. Risk management and compliance. I spoke about this, all right? Regulatory compliance, risk assessment, or in the automation. I mean, this one has to do with the technical people who will probably support you to get some of these things um, implemented. Uh -huh. uh, compliance auditing. You know, uh, we looked at it and see and be sure that your AI tool that you have um, um, implemented is actually doing the right thing because because it's a machine that is learning new things. It may happen that it could do something wrong right so we must make sure that it's always on time it's always um uh, up to the tasks and it's not doing something that is on tours right yes so ethical considerations um uh we 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 spoke about some of these things that uh you must always be fair okay uh the privacy of the people is is much 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 concerned to them so anytime you are collecting data sometimes you see that it says uh, you must confirm that, yes, you have absolutely read the terms and conditions apply to this particular um, service you want to um, hooked up to. I always say that take you a little time to read some of these things. Um, it's always huge document that is always there. But uh, I, I, I always say that look through. You can flip. You can flip through all the pages. Sometimes something will click your mind to wait. Like sometimes, for instance, uh, uh, um, they try to indemnify themselves, okay, out of certain um, uh, problems that may come up with. If you think that you don't like the way they are trying to take themselves out of those um, responsibilities, you can decide not to get engage their service, all right? So these are some of the things that you need to look out for once you are uh, going through this platform. Your data collection, uh, as I said, you should not be biased. Uh, in collecting data, always uh, be on uh, guard for collecting quality data, and the decision will also be quality if that is uh, possible. Responsible AI used uh, in consulting, always be responsible. Don't say that you are getting people's details or people's data, and so you, you want to take an advantage and use it for other purposes at which you are collecting them. If you do, if you do that, the law will catch up with you. Um, and you would be wanting. Right. Right. And there's also another key thing that we need to be looking at how to do it. Um, uh, the ethical part of it where place uh, or displace jobs, okay? Uh, as I said, uh, if I, I am an IT person, but I understand all these things, I can do all these things. If you employ me to be your marketing guy, I can do the same as maybe a marketer could do. Um, that would mean that gradually you are trying to, you know, lay off people who are actually a marketers in your company. And we are saying that you should not do that. What you're supposed to be doing is to train these people um, to use these tools. Be it, you know, you can probably have a section like we are having now uh, talk to some of us or talk to uh, our companies and stuff like that who come in and train some of these people and uh, maybe it's trained on specific tools to use for these purposes and that can help them to upgrade themselves so that they will not be displaced uh, uh, from, from, from their job. It's, it's not fair that the technology is taking over uh, everybody's job um, uh, all around. So rescaling, re okay, uh, rescaling is key. So you can have hands-on uh, understanding of some of these tools that can help uh, you to enrich your workforce. All right. Yeah, we spoke about accountability already. Uh, be, be transparent in whatever you are doing. When you are deploying your AI tools, please be transparent. Uh, don't do it alone. Uh, make sure you collaborate on, on doing that uh, so that 
at the end of it, uh, it, it should not be um, a problem for you alone, but it should be something that uh, collaboratively everybody is, 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 is bringing on board to, to have some form of responsibility um, to, to it. And so that when you don't see or you don't spot the, the issue early, somebody else can do that or can get that. And that can help you to quickly uh, mitigate the, 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 the dangers that it may come with. So thank you so much uh, for the time. Uh, I'll pause here. If there is any conversation, somebody have contributions, uh, questions, uh, please let's, let, let, let's bring them uh, before we end the section. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you've changed my perception. I have a presentation this week. You have influenced my deck in so many ways. And I feel I should toss over the deck with you to look at it for me. It's on transport, 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 transformative sales education, building the okay. next generation of sales leaders. So I'll share with you the deck I've done so mm. far. So you you make sure I go AI because it's like the AI <laughs> is the ish. But let I me ask, you. let me ask, yes. if AI can do all of the things that we are seeing here, this is digression. How come we have the challenges we are seeing in Kenya and for that matter, Britain? Couldn't they have used AI to crystal ball gaze this and nip it before these routes and chaos that we are seeing all over the place? Yes. So, yes, that, that can easily be done. Uh, as I said, probably may, they may not have they may not have that system in place now, okay? But or it in may the future, be because, or because it's a public service uh, in Asia, setting, uh, yes, and they see, didn't take yes, AI so seriously. I, I, again, as I said, you know, I was I I spoke to you about the fact that I was trying to do something like a hotspot identification, all right? Now that that is a typical way that they can easily track you know, how public, um, you know, outcry can be generated. Because most of these things are coming from Facebook or from other social media platforms. That's where most often, even if you look at the Kenya story, they governize the people through these platforms. Okay, they got these people through these platforms. So if we have a system that can, can analyze, you know, and do a sentiment analysis and know that, hey, there's a danger coming, they, can, they could probably deploy the police all around the place before uh, these crowds, you know, comes in. But because they don't have the system, they don't really have it yet. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, an emerging, you know, technology, and definitely we will get to that level where you know these crime detections and uh, preventions will be done, you know, earlier before it happens, right? So it's coming. Yes, any more contributions or questions, please? Yes. Yeah. Um, looking at the AI, I think is futuristic. And then looking at the current dilemma that we found ourselves, I don't know, we have a generation that call themselves a Gen Z generation. And mm. They normally use the social media pages and all those places, and they are, I mean, abreast with social media. They use AI tools and all those things. They understand what, I mean, they are quickly to, I mean, understand what is called AI. And my worry mm -hmm. is how do we bring this old generation, like those baby bomb, those born in a baby bombers uh, time, how can we <laughs> tell them? Because they have, the for money, computers. they have the money to use, but they don't understand. Mm. They have the phone, but they don't normally go to those pages. They don't normally use those apps and all that. How do we bring them in terms of understanding AI? Yes. So uh, no matter what we do, uh, generations will go, generations will come. 
our generation today is different from generations um, years back. Uh, the last time I checked, every generation is 30 years. Okay. So if you are if you are more than 30 years, you should know that you have passed a generation. <laughs> so if you are 60 years, then you should know that you are about two generations gone already. Right? So that is how generations are counted. Now, <clears throat> the generations that uh, are Gen Z's or calling themselves Gen Z's now. <laughs> so it means that their time is going to be different. Okay? Uh, it, it means that the AI is going to be very prominent in their generations than our generations currently. All right? Mm -hmm. So definitely there will be a gradual, you know, wiped out of other generations who are not very much conversant with these things that we are talking about. Uh, they would they will go and the new ones will come. And those that are coming, those of us who understand now have to shape the way of those people to come over and take take charge of it. It's the same thing that our forefathers have done. So what we are living today, we are living today, um, the world we are living today is because of what our forefathers or the older generations have done. You see, so if you see the space you are living today, it's because of if you go to other parts of the world, like the UKs and the rest, they are living in the world they are living today because of what their generations have done. So we need to, we cannot say that because they do not understand the space, uh, we should be waiting for them or uh, we should do something else. And, 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 and I know that now even the older generations above 60s, above 70s, they are, they are now holding... Uh, smartphones, even in the villages, in our villages, they are having even sophisticated phones than even some of the people in the cities. Sometimes they may not have, they may don't know how to, you know, maneuver their way around, but we have way to even track them. They are being tracked now. As long as you have a smartphone, we can easily get you. It's only that if you are having a young ones. Okay, as long as you have a smartphone, we know you. We know you are living in a specific area. Even with the YAM phones, okay, even that one, the telcos can track you. The telcos knows that you are holding their chip, okay, uh, and this is where you are holding that chip. So it's no longer the equation about uh, you don't understand the space and and all that. And and one of the things we are doing is to whip up the interest and uh, by having these sections and making sure that everybody understand the space. So it's a gradual uh, step and we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get there. And I heard um, uh, uh, Mr. Ajakum also saying, yes, he's going to have a training. And you see, this training has changed his perception, right? And it means that whatever presentation he's going to do, he is going to, you know, he need to tweak it so that it can then bring the people into the current situation. And so that is how it continues. And we we'll all, uh, it will resonate to, uh, with, with everybody uh, across board. Any more uh, inputs, contribution questions? All right. So, if you don't have uh, any more questions, contributions, please check your chat section. Those of you join uh, now, please, there's a certification going on. If you want to be certified for attending these uh, sections, please put in your name. Uh, we'll reach out to you. We also have a Momo number. There's 100 cities for the certificates. Um, if you have knowledge in, in, in a space that you want to, um, um, you know, have a course, or you want to have some learning uh, that you want to be done, please go to africocity.org and, and create an account and begin to teach something and put it there. We'll sell it for you. Um, and you should, you can be making some money uh, alongside your, your real hustle. And please go in there and also tell us how you feel about our presentation uh, using the uh, other links that follows the... The Africosity links. There's also a YouTube links over there. You can get all the all the presentations from Tuesday 
till uh, the last one is coming at um, 6 30 it's starting at 6 30 and it will end at 7 30. Uh, so try and join that section too uh, that section is for lecturers and for teachers those who want to teach so if you want to do some presentation and put it on our fricosity platform uh, it, that would be a good uh, platform for you to learn some of the tools that could be available uh, for you to uh, get on board uh, thank you so much for joining the section uh, if you don't have any other contribution, thank you so much, uh, and I will see you in the evening. Uh, have a great uh, day, and bye-bye.